Hey guys. Um, so my name is Mary and I run the website The Leather Beast where I teach people like you, leathersmiths and leather workers alike, how to grow and build a business and how to increase the sales of their leather goods. I'm really passionate about helping people to be able to reap the rewards, get out from behind your workbench, out, put the mallet down and actually uh, be able to get your leather goods up online and sell them them for a profit. So over the last decade, I've uh, created many handmade businesses and I've been able to successfully monetize these businesses and I want to show you how you can too. So before we get into today's topic, I just want to mention that I do have a free online workshop um, all about how I've made an income from my leather goods business and how you can too. So if you click the link in the description there, head to Lucrative Leathercraft and you'll be able to um, watch that video training. It's a workshop. You'll be able to watch it immediately. So what I want to talk to you today is I want to talk to you about the three types of people that you must be following on Instagram. Now, if you uh, haven't been living under a rock, no offense to anybody that has been living under a rock, but if you haven't been living under a rock for the last 10 years, you probably are on Instagram, right? And you've been diligently trying to build that following and really um, leverage that. You know, you post about your workshop, you post about your leather goods that you have for sale, um, you do behind the scenes videos and all of that you're doing really good really trying to attract your customer to you and get more followers but have you ever wondered who should I be following who should who should you be following you know what's on the other the other side of that and is there a strategy is there a type of person that I should be following or is it okay to just keep following uh, you know my college roommates and check out her her kids and you know see what my friends are eating for dinner and all of the other random posts that you see um, people posting about online um, so the short answer is yes there's absolutely a strategy to who you should be following on Instagram in order to uh, really boost your leather goods business and create a real impact. Um, so first I want to share with you why it's important and then I'm going to share with you those three types of people that uh, are really important for you to follow. And the people that you want to follow are simply people that you want to work with. So those three types of people are your uh, competition, press, and stores. So that means not following, you know, family and friends unless they are your ideal customer or unless they have friends and people that they follow who are their ideal customers. Now the reason you want to follow the people that you want to work with is because then you're feed remains really clean and really relevant to your business, to what it is you are trying to um, get across with your brand. It remains really representative of who um, your uh, competition is, of who you want to be working with. It all just remains really clean and it allows you to be able to focus on um, your business instead of, you know, all of the other random posts that um, your friends and family are posting on. Um, that said, you can all, you can follow your friends and family on your business, but this is my suggestion for really keeping it streamlined and really trying to um, to focus your energy and make it as efficient as possible whenever you are on Instagram and posting for your business. Um, the other reason why you want to keep it streamlined and keep it really focused on your business and your business intentions is because um, it, it allows Instagram to to get a better sense of what you actually like. So nobody knows exactly how the algorithm works, right? You, we don't really know like the ins and outs of it. Um, but we do know that Instagram wants its users to see more of what they like and less of what they don't like, right? So if you 
fill up your feed with all kinds of like a random stuff from like, you know, friends and families to like different niches and, you know, you're following all kinds of different subject matter versus keeping it really clean, focusing on your leather business, focusing on um, stores that you could get your work into stores that feature other people's work that is similar to yours, your competition who makes similar things to you, um, your press and media outlets that feature other designers and leather workers that are just like you. If you keep your, um, your feed and who you're liking and who you are engaging with to that core group of people, then that is going to help the algorithm to continue to um, suggest your profile to other people um, and it's also going to help Instagram suggest other people to you that you should be following. So it just really kind of helps to keep things really um, streamlined and clear. Okay, so let's talk about those three groups of people. So we'll start with your competition and you might be thinking, I don't want to work with my competition. I want to destroy my competition. Um, that's all fine and good, but as I teach in lucrative leather craft, when you know your competition, you know your customer as well, because you can use your competition to get clearer about your um, about your customer. If you've ever had a problem really trying to nail down who your customer is, just go look at your competition. Look at an established brand that is legit your competition. So they need to be selling similar things as you at a similar quality, a similar price point. Um, and then look at their audience. And that is, there's your customer and you can take all of your notes directly from them. So you wanna definitely be following a handful of your competition and um, engaging with them a lot because then when you are engaging on your competition's feed, then their customer, who is also your customer, they just don't know it yet, um, will see you and they'll click back and they will find you. And uh, a kind of a bonus to this is that there also might come a time in the future where you want to do some collaborations. Collaborations with other artists is a great way to widen your network and get your work in front of a huge um, audience. And so if you're already making connections with your competition and engaging with them, um, then you've already kind of laid the groundwork and laid sort of a, a relationship there and they'll be um, much more likely to actually respond to you when you do come to them and pitch something, you know, or it's, it's just, um, you'll have started this relationship with them because they'll be familiar with you since you are engaging with them. Um, press and media outlets on Instagram. So you want to follow, you know, anyone who is talking about your kind of leather goods. So that could be blogs, influencers, um, magazines, both online and print. All of these people have an Instagram presence and all of these people, as long as what they are talking about is leather goods similar to yours, and especially if it's even in your niche, um, you want to be following them because, again, they're going to have the same audience. If they're talking about um, leather goods and things that are related to leather work, um, then their audience will also be interested in your leather goods and what you're doing. So whenever you follow these people and then you, get, you engage with them, then their customers see you in the comments as well. Um, and they come back and they follow you and uh, you start to really build your community. And again, like with um, following your competition, you're also really building that relationship. You're not just trying to get in front of their customer base, but you're also building that relationship with um, these people. And who knows in the future, you could absolutely be working with them, pitching story ideas, you know, maybe trying to get into the holiday gift guides. And if you've already been engaging with this certain magazine that you want to pitch them your work and have them feature it, then they're going to be like, oh, I'm familiar with this name. I think I know who this is. They've been active on my Instagram. They've been giving me a lot of engagement. So it just kind of works both ways like that. Um, and pitching your brand to get more press is obviously an amazing way to widen your network and get your work 
out there. Um, this is one of the things that I teach in the last phase of Lucrative Leathercraft, all about how to scale your business and pitching to, um, pitching to press is definitely one of those um, methods. And finally, following shops and stores uh, that can feature, that feature work just like yours, that feature your competition's work or other work that is similar to yours or other work that has um, the same customer. So again, following these accounts puts you in front of your ideal customer because if these shops and stores are truly selling work that is like yours, then that is going to be your customer as well. And so when you engage with these people, it allows you to um, reach a wider audience and get in front of their customer base. Um, and like I said, in the future, when you scale your business, you also want to be using this as um, a way to do that, um, selling to stores so that you can get this wider exposure um, for your work. Um, so I want to know, are you following the right accounts on Instagram. Um, what other kinds of accounts are you following? Um, as long as you are just kind of keeping it to the brands, the accounts and profiles that are really relevant to your work, it's a really great way to keep your Instagram daily practice really streamlined instead of feeling overwhelmed by it. So I have this whole practice that I do with my Instagram, Instagram account every day. And one of the steps that I do is scrolling through my feed for a little bit and really going through and um, intentionally commenting and engaging with everybody on there and that's because all of these people are really important to me building that community it's not i don't have to sift through you know my mom's posts or my uh college roommates posts you know about like really random things i can just really focus on um, the people that i am following and the people that are going to be really important and impactful on me growing my um, social following and really getting introduced to new customers so there you have it. Um, again, I want to encourage you, if you want to learn how I've created an income selling my leather goods and how you can as well, click the link in the profile, head to lucrativeleathercraft.com um, and you'll see it right there at the top. You can watch this online workshop today immediately and it's really great it'll really walk you through sort of determining what your business is all about what you have to offer how to figure out who your customer is and then how to promote your products to them it's a really um, a step-by-step -step process that I've been able to sort of boil down and I share those steps with you in the workshop all right you guys it's been an awesome video I will talk to you very soon have a great Thursday. Bye.